Hello, welcome back. I was originally going to go over a few more fundamental concepts of uh, programming in JavaScript, but to be honest, it's getting a little bit dry and I think we need something a little more exciting, something a little more interactive, something that really demonstrates why JavaScript is so popular and why it is a good programming language. Now to do that, I think we need to create a little bit of interactivity in the page. So now we're going to edit a little bit of HTML. Uh, this course is not based on HTML or CSS, so the styling that you see, the basic HTML, is very raw. We're not here to make a beautiful website. I'm sure you know HTML and CSS, and you can make these as beautiful as you want. But for the purpose of this lesson, we're going to keep things simple. So what we're going to learn today are query selectors. How do we get information, or how do we add information to the page? So we have two parts to this lesson that I would like to go over. The first one is how do we add information into the page? And the second one is how do we grab information from the page? Now a query selector requires either a class, an ID, or an element. Now there are ways to make this a lot more complicated, but we're gonna stick with the basics right now. And at this point in time, you should be familiar with IDs and classes and HTML and CSS. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just gonna write a basic class. Uh, actually, let's do an ID. I'm going to call this main. So I have a div called main with the ID of main in there. That ID is very important. And I'm going to leave this blank. There's not going to be anything in there. Now I'll go over to my browser and I'm just going to open up the console. And what we see here inside of the, the element section, if I toggle down the body, we can see that main is in there. In case you didn't know, you can actually edit information in here. So I'm just going to make this a, a little easier uh, for you to see here. So I added the word tested and it added it onto my page immediately. I'm going to add a little bit more. It says and more. So it doesn't take into account your extra white space because that's what HTML does. HTML doesn't care about your extra white space unless you explicitly tell it that it needs to have more white space. So I'm going to undo this. I'm going to go over to my console and I'm going to create a variable. And this variable is just going to be called body. In fact, we don't actually need the var. And all we want to do is write document dot query selector. Now the reason we use document dot is because query selector is a method, a function that is a part of the page document. So we type query selector and what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for the ID of main. So we wrap this in a string with parentheses around it because it's, it's a function. And just like you're targeting in CSS, you target the same way using query selectors. So here we type main, hit enter, and it gives us our HTML. We can see it in there. So we know that it's selected the right thing. In fact, actually what I'm going to do, because I don't want to uh, create too many variables with different names. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this. There we go. We have main is equal to main. I just want to make sure that main is equal to main. This way nobody's getting confused about uh, the body element. Main, if we wanted to add any information into this element, we add inner HTML. And when we start typing the word dot inner, we get inner dot HTML. Parentheses and then open a string and say, hello world. Now, how come this didn't work? We used parentheses, we used a string, just like we did in the query selector, but it gave us a problem. It said HTML is not a function. Now, when you see something like that, it's because it literally is not a function. There's nothing to run. Instead, what you want to do is you want to change the actual value. The inner HTML is what is held inside of an element. That's what JavaScript sees it as. It sees it as a property, not a function, but like an attribute, just like how you might have dark hair or blue eyes, or you might be wearing a green shirt. It's a property of who, who you are or what you're wearing. And that's what we're going to edit. So instead of trying to change the fundamental properties of a person to get them to change their shirt color, we're just going to change the shirt color because it doesn't need to be that complicated. So here we type main.innerHTML is equal to hello world. 
and we see that it shows up automatically. So now we're getting a lot more interactive. Our JavaScript is actually able to go in and edit things that are on the page as long as it knows what to look for. And in this case, it's looking for the ID of main, which we know is in here. Now, if we look at the element, it actually added hello world for us. So if we wanted to, we could go in here, we could edit this. Hello world 2222 shows up in there console. We could run the same thing again, and it's just going to override it just like that. Now, if we wanted to add more, we could use an arithmetic operator. We say main dot inner HTML is equal to whatever it currently is plus hello world. So instead of adding hello world, we're going to add uh, another line in here that just says, I am editing this page. And now we look up here and it says, hello world, I am editing this page. Now we have both sentences in there. But what if we wanted to get the information from there and store that in a variable, edit it, and put it back on the page? Well, we can do that too. Let's create a new variable called content. The variable name is unimportant. You can call it whatever you like. Say main.innerHTML. And now every time we write content, we get the current content. So what happens now that we've created the content variable that has hello world, I'm editing this page as a string. What happens if we edit the inner HTML again? Does content change? Well, let's find out. Main.innerHTML. Well, we know that's the same. Let's go ahead and change that. And we added the word edited. Now what happens when we type content again? Nothing content was stored the way that we originally grabbed the information. So just because you stored information in one of the variables from the inner HTML does not mean that you cannot go and change that inner HTML again and have your content change. This is a very, very good thing. So now we have the original content. We don't have the word edited in there. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. But now we want to edit content and throw it back into the page. We want to edit the page based on what, what it used to be. So just as a demonstration, we're going to change the inner HTML to please remove me. We know that content is still what it originally was. So now let's edit content. Content is equal to, well, what do we want to do with it? We could change it to uppercase. So let's do content dot to uppercase. Now a beautiful thing in JavaScript is this ability to string methods together. So we could say to uppercase and then we could also say dot replace bases with dashes. And what happens when we hit enter? It did exactly what we wanted. Uh, so it turned everything to uppercase. Uh, we replaced our first space with a dash. And that's because we didn't tell it to replace all the, all the spaces. We just told it to replace the first one of its kind. So now if we type main.innerHTML is equal to content, we have changed the content of the page. However, while doing this, we overwrote the original content variable, and it is no longer what it used to be. We can no longer get that back.